Okay, it's time to make some beef jerky. This is my beef jerky that I made a few years ago. And it's Jean's jerky. And this is what I use. You can read that or not? I don't know. Maybe you can. Those are the directions right there. So, I've got a piece of meat here. You try to get lean meat because you don't want a lot of fat in your jerky. Say when it dries, you don't want the fat will make it tough. So you want it as lean as you can. So what I'm going to do here is I got a piece of uh, eye of the round roast, and I'm going to cut it into pieces. I know some of you are going to say wash the meat. Well, it's going to go into a marinade, which is going to kill everything. I'll wash the meat. All right, I'm washing the meat. For those of you who think you got, you got to wash the meat. Okay, nice fresh piece of meat. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to cut this pieces of this meat into pieces that are one eighth of an inch thick and three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm going to have them like, mm, I'll cut this into, first I'll cut it this way. Now you notice the grain of the meat. It's going to see the lines go that way. So you want to cut across the grain. If you cut with the grain, you're going to get very, very tough, tough pieces. So you cut across the grain. That's what the grain is. See the lines? That's the grain. Okay, I should have left it like this in the whole big piece and just gone across. And I had a perfect piece. But I screwed it up, so now i got to cut them into little pieces like this. But if you have a round like this, you should have been able to cut the whole thing. Then you'd have had a piece of meat this big for your jerky. But I screwed it up. So, okay, so I'm going to have little pieces because i still got to cut it across the grain. So I'm going to have little pieces of jerky like this. So, if I cut them with the grain, it's going to be tough. Maybe I'll cut them with the grain, see what happens. All right. I'll cut them with the grain. It's going to be tough, though. See that? There's the meat cut up. Thin strips. Thin strips. Okay? Now I want to make the marinade. Okay, now in my blender... I'm going to put in my blender here, in my blender, I'm going to put in here a cup of soy sauce. Well, I don't think I have enough soy sauce. I don't think I have a whole cup, but I'm going to actually measure today. So, uh, let's see. Close to a cup of soy sauce. So I'm going to finish the soy sauce off with what I have, which is teriyaki. Pretty much the same thing. I'll put the teriyaki here, so... There we go. Cup of that. Okay. Half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Okay. Half a cup of vinegar. Balsamic vinegar. Seven cloves of garlic. Seven cloves of garlic. Let me cut it up a little bit. Phew, that smells good. All right. A good sized piece of ginger. This is my own fresh homemade ginger grown. I grew my own ginger. So I'm going to cut the ginger up into little pieces like this. See, when you grow your own, it's nice and soft and hardly any skin at all. Ooh, does that smell delicious. Holy smokes. Ginger. Cayenne red pepper. A teaspoon of this. This is going to give it a kick. Teaspoon of this. Okay, this is a tablespoon, so that's a teaspoon of cayenne red pepper. And... After the cayenne red pepper, 
Uh, a heaping taste of oh, horseradish. My favorite, of course. Horseradish. Woo! That's a zingy. Oh, horseradish. Now that, this mixture here will grow hair on anything. So, uh, that's about it. Now, I take this. Okay. What am I going to over here now? I'm going to put my top on my blender. I'm going to put my blender here. I'm going to blend this up till it's pureed. Into a, okay, pureed food processor. On and pureed. want it a little sweet, you can add some brown sugar. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit of brown sugar, okay? Or you can add liquid smoke, or you can add any other flavorings that you like. But I'm going to put in just a little bit of sugar. I know it's not on my diet, but hey, just a little bit of brown sugar. I'm going to probably put a, uh, maybe a, oops, maybe a, mm, I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of brown sugar in there. Whoops. Okay, put a quarter of a cup of brown sugar in there. What a mess. And I did have a clean kitchen. Okay. Put my sugar away. There we go. Ah, look at this mess. Okay. Put the top back on. On and pure. Now, that is all blended up. Okay. Now, from this, I'm going to put the beef strips into a Ziploc bag and pour the mixture into the bag. Seal the bag. Okay. I'm going to use two Ziploc bags. Put half the meat, one Ziploc bag. The other meat. The Ziploc bag. Okay. About equal. I'm going to take the mixture. I'm going to pour half the mixture into one bag. Half the mixture into the other bag. Okay, that should be it. Okay. And seal up the bag and smush it around. Seal up the bag, smush it around. Okay? Make sure every piece is coated. Okay? It looks pretty good, huh? Okay, now this, I'll put the string in the zip like pour the mixture, seal the bag, and smoosh the bag so that all the meat is covered. Now I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for five days. Turning the bag every day and smooshing it so that all the meat is covered. And all that sauce and stuff will go into that meat. And it will preserve it because of the vinegar and the salt in the soy sauce. So that's part one. So in five days, I'll take these out. Okay, it's jerky time drying. Okay, I got my three cookie sheets, and I'm gonna line each cookie sheet with aluminum foil. Why? Because I don't wanna have to clean the pans afterwards, because the uh, jerky drippings are gonna drip down under there, and I don't wanna have to clean them. So, aluminum foil is much easier. So once I put the free aluminum foil on here, and I'll put my cookie racks. Okay, this is day, actually it's day four. I'm not gonna wait five days. This is my stuff in my uh, gooby up beef jerky. Now, uh, I'm gonna put this, lay this on sheets. I'm putting my oven on to 140 degrees. 
and I'm laying these across my cookie sheet I could have marinated another day but I got things to do tomorrow so I'm gonna to do it today so I'll lay them across here I'll put my oven on to 140 degrees now if you don't have a, an oven where you can set it to 140 degrees what you'll probably want to do is do this in the summertime and put it outside in a hot 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 sun and let it dry all day long but all we're doing is drying it so I'm putting my oven on uh, 140 okay 140 and I'll put the, continue to put the strips on here and when I get them all I'll put them on the racks in the oven and I'll keep them in there for seven seven hours? Is it seven or eight hours? Let's see what I put down. Uh, six to seven hours depending on if you want them chewier or drier. Okay? So this is what I'm doing and it smells absolutely delicious. Okay, this is how it looks. Ready to go in? The 140 degree oven, which I'm going to put in right now for six to seven hours. Okay, the timer is up. The time is off. I just took this one out of the oven. And there's the beef jerky. There it is. I be joking. I'll get you back to that. Mm -hmm. Not that hot because it's only 140 degrees. Mm -hmm. And awesome. Now It's pretty dry. Some of the thicker pieces you might need to do them a little longer. Can't wait. But not really. They're dry. And that is beef turkey. Delicious.